we have with us the Toyota Weagle. Let's do a review. The Toyota Wigo is the most popular small hatchback in the Philippine market. Based on the Daihatsu Isla and also known as the Toyota Agya, the second generation was launched locally last year. With the new platform, we check out in this review what's new and what's improved. What we have here is the top spec 2024 Toyota Wigo 1.0G CVT priced at 729,000 Philippine pesos. Starting with the exterior, the new Wigo looks much better now in front with its sleeker and more aggressive face. There's a large front grille with chrome on top and full LED headlights as well as LED park lights on the bumper. The side does receive a bit more character with some body lines here and there. Power folding mirrors with turn signals are equipped on this variant. And we get 14 inch alloy wheels. I'm not a fan of these as I think the ones on the first gen look much better. These look very old. And like those, I'm also not a huge fan of the rear design for the same reason. While the boxy shape and angular lines do make it look better, it still looks a bit old. At least we do get a rear spoiler on this variant to set it apart. Anyway, opening the tailgate, the Wego still offers a decent amount of space for a tiny hatchback. We can fit here one large piece of luggage for sure. If you need more space, the rear seats can be folded, though not flat, but at least. In fact, the space was surprisingly enough for me to fit my mountain bike with the front wheel removed. And now we're inside the Toyota Wigo 1.0G and as expected, like the exterior, it's as basic as it gets over here. But they did change this a lot to make this so much more improved compared to the previous generation. So starting with the design, if you're familiar with other Toyota models, this should be familiar to you as well. Because this basically takes the same design language as the Toyota Rays, Toyota Avanza, and Velo. So this all looks very familiar and it also looks very modern compared to the previous generation and the materials that they used here are so much better i'm surprised actually because this hard touch plastic here hard touch plastic everywhere everything is hard touch plastic as you would expect but the material they used is very solid it doesn't feel that cheap and yeah it just feels very well built compared to something like a toyota yaris cross even i'm that actually really surprised me. You'll also see here in the door panel, everything is hard touch plastic. Even the armrest is hard touch plastic. Expected again, but it still feels very solid inside this vehicle. And then our steering wheel is a three-spoke steering wheel, just a very basic design, but I actually do really like it. It's just wrapped in urethane, and we only have our audio controls on the left. It's only adjustable for tilt as well, so you cannot make this move closer to you but that's okay again I expected that from this price point then our horn beep, beep. it's a very teeny tiny Toyota cheap Japanese horn which kind of matches the car but I do wish we had the horn of the Toyota Vios here instead for a little bit of a deeper sound but again I'm not complaining that much easy to change and right behind the steering wheel we have our traditional analog gauge design so this is actually quite refreshing to see. It's very basic, but Toyota did some effort to make this look really good. And I actually like how it looks. Then over there, we can also find a small display that shows our trip computer. So we have our fuel level, our current gear, our fuel economy, our odometer, and our vehicle mileage. So everything that you need, the basic information is already there. Then here in the center is an 8-inch touchscreen infotainment system which is the typical that you would find in these Daihatsu-based Toyota. So it's very responsive. Actually, well, not super responsive, but it is decently responsive. And it played some Taylor Swift. But yeah, so it's decently responsive. It's fairly easy to use. And we do have some physical buttons on the sides and our lone USB port in this car on the screen. So that's the only USB port you can find in this car it's for our apple carplay and android auto so once connected yeah the apple carplay does look really good it's nice to have this feature already in this car the only thing i don't like about this screen is that when you're using it when you're tapping the different functions it feels like you're touching some kind of improperly installed screen protector so that does give you the impression of cheapness which well this car is really cheap anyway then moving down we have our push start button so this car has push button start at its price even the more expensive honda brio does not get that we have digital climate controls manual of course but it is digital and very easy to use and it's physical buttons which i really like and then moving further down 12 volt power outlet the only one as well lots of storage two cup holders 
Then here in the center, our gear shifter. So this one also feels quite nice actually. And we do have sport mode and brake mode or our low gear over there. Then when you put it in reverse, as expected from a Toyota, it has that annoying beeping sound. And But do note that this has a reverse camera, no guidance lines, and not the best quality, but we do have it. And it also has parking sensors as standard. So that's actually nice to have in this car. It's surprising again. Then speaking of the quality earlier, this center console is also quite well built. So it does move a bit, but it is very well built. No unnecessary creaks. Then moving here, we have more storage space over here. We can put our phone over there. Fits perfectly. Additional storage again and our traditional parking brake as well. Then over here in the back, we have a small storage area which we can also use to fit our water bottle and it does fit it pretty well. And then before we head to the back, let's talk about our seat because this G variant does get a different set of seats compared to the lower variant. So I don't know what to call it, but all I can say is that it is so much better. The material, the fabric material is pretty good. It's not the most fancy material, it's very basic material, but it's okay and it's what you'd expect again from a car at this price point. This seat is also height adjustable which surprised me again. Well, plenty of surprises in this car and then our side bolstering is pretty good actually. It's very big so it does give you decent amounts of support and of course the adjustable headrest which you can't get on the lower variants. And like many new Toyota models these days, we have a built-in dash cam from the dealer. So this already comes a standard on this variant. So this means you don't have to buy a separate dash cam anymore. Maybe you can buy one from there for the rear, but for the front, you already have this over there. And now we're at the back seats of the Toyota Wego. And as expected, there's really not much to see back here except for these seats and a couple of storage areas around here. So anyway, let's talk about the seats first, which are honestly not so comfortable. So they're very small. I have lack of thigh support over here and they're very flat but that again is expected so at least we do have the same materials in front they didn't cheap out anymore with that then materials here as expected as well hard touch plastic on the door panels all hard touch plastic but space is quite decent over here so we do have decent foot room leg room is okay and knee room is fine so head room also is fine so it's what you'd expect from a small car there's actually more space here than i expected also good to note that the light up here, your dome light, is the same one you will find from Toyotas from the late 90s, early 2000s. In fact, it's the same as my family's 2005 Fortuner, so we still have the same part from then. And now we're driving the Toyota Wego 1.0G CVT, and like it was intended to be doing, we are driving it inside the city, so we get to experience fully how this performs inside the city where you will we're 90 percent of the time or maybe pretty much 95 and for others every single time that they drive this car it will be driving and this is not my first time to drive a wego at least the nameplate so i was able to try one before the first generation and it was fine for me and the second generation it is my first time right now and honestly this really surprised me as well in terms of driving not only with the interior earlier with everything i mentioned earlier this also surprised me with driving let's talk about the engine first it's still the same it's a one liter naturally aspirated three cylinder gasoline engine that produces 67 horsepower and 89 newton meters of torque compared to a cvt so that cvt is what's new for this car because the old one had a four speed automatic transmission and it does really change things up because we're able to have a much smoother drive right now it no longer feels as bad as a four speed or as sluggish as a four speed automatic rather one thing to note though is that this does have the tendency to be jerky at lower speeds it's quite similar to the toyota yaris cross which i recently reviewed so yeah again jerky at low speeds but it does perform really well surprisingly and honestly i'm liking how this drives more than the Toyota Yaris Cross. Engine response is actually quite good, so you, float, you step on the accelerator and it will instantly respond. There is no delay in this car. So another good thing about this is steering feel because I was surprised to find that this steering is actually 
a bit weighted so that does give us the impression of feedback which you know pretty much in these small cars is almost non-existent so at least the weighted steering does help us experience this car a little bit better i mean obviously it doesn't handle as well as something like a honda brio which that car just really is a lot sportier a lot more fun to drive but this will do and this and you know that this is really designed for a comfort comfortable drive inside the city and i guess it does deliver in that regard one thing to note though is that this steering the steering wheel maybe it's the steering column at around just 3,000 kilometers actually we just reached 3,000 kilometers during this drive there is a tendency for it to have a squeaking sound when you are turning it so I don't know if you will hear it right now but it does exist at times so they didn't make it sound now but it does exist so I don't know if that's a quality issue or something but yeah speaking of quality everything is again very well built like I mentioned earlier because there are no unnecessary rattles in this car. In fact, compared to the Honda Brio, there are actually less rattles in this car. I love the Honda Brio, but that had a little bit of a quality issue. This one does not have that. Another thing, at higher speeds, around 60 kilometers per hour or so, the car does have the tendency to make this whining noise, which I did find very annoying. You will have to get used to that because it's just a constant high-pitched, sound i don't know if it's coming from the transmission or something but it's not very pleasing to hear it again around 60 kilometers per hour and above so you will be experiencing that a lot when you take this out on the highway which is don't worry it's possible you just won't be the fastest so i'll try to get that sound to appear right now since we are on a an open road but yeah let's see and there we go i don't know if you can hear it right now but i am currently hearing it it is definitely annoying and even when the engine is cold when you just started driving in the morning or so there is this annoying sound as well coming from the transmission i don't know why but it is there and speaking of noise let's talk about road noise insulation because obviously it won't be the best this is a very affordable city car so that's fine with me it is loud at this speed see 40 kilometers per hour it is already loud but again this car is very affordable and other noises of so wind noise maybe on the highway it'll be a bit louder i'm not sure because i didn't take this out on the highway but again this is an affordable car so don't really expect too much at least we get a really good ride quality as well so that's something that also surprised me so it does absorb bumps really well and any road imperfections really you won't be feeling too bad that you're in a toyota we go unlike in some other cars and as you saw there i had to merge in a u-turn and it does do pretty well it is getting quite loud but it you can really feel where that loudness is going so overall i think well maybe i'm not the intended market for this car i'm not really a small car person especially with how small cars are being bullied by other motorists but at the same time I guess for this car's intended market, it is still a very good choice. I personally would go for the Honda Brio still, but this is a decent choice. Maybe just better wheels. And let's go to one reason why people really love this car. And that's fuel economy because we are able to achieve a really good number even if we just drove this purely inside the city. So we were able to get around 15 kilometers per liter, which is, yeah, excellent. I mean we have we don't have much in terms of power and torque so we do have to keep pushing this car but at the same time we're still able to get a very good number and on the highway i'm not sure how much you can get but according to some of my friends they were able to achieve around 28 kilometers per liter so that's a good number really the toyota wego may not seem to be the best choice out there admittedly a bit left behind despite being new but considering its target market and its usual type of buyer it actually makes sense as a basic point A to B car without much modern tech to worry about and for those who just want something affordable.